Hey everybody, hope everybody's having a great day. It's a beautiful Sunday here in the H. About to go hang out with uh, some of the guys, sit back, relax, watch some football, unwind. It's been a long week. But here we are right now on the way, another segment of Riding with Rick. This is a more relaxed, less technical, less scientific examination of popular uh, themes, topics, uh, current events and all of that good stuff like that and today I'm going to talk to you about our proclivity to expect celebrities to do the things we aren't doing and how it plays out uh, and I'm going to talk specifically about Coach Prime Deion Sanders and how this thing is playing out and I'm going to call a spade a spade uh, you know the routine if you like what you see or hear click that like button if you like it enough that you want to check out what else we have going on, got uh, close to 3,000 some videos on this channel alone, uh, look, click the subscribe button, share it. And if you believe in the work we do, if you follow, you know what we do. We don't just show up on here. We've been doing this thing for decades and we have been on uh, social media for going on 14, 15 years, uh, pushing this thing since social media was in its infancy and we're still here. Uh, but the work we do is really truly most uh, uh, effectively and passionately impacted the inner city community is the boots on the ground efforts and the scientific research that we can do conduct. But whatever you do, show some love, show some support. Here we go. Okay, I'm hearing all this stuff about what Dion didn't do, what Dion did when he was at uh, Jackson State. Why Dion didn't do this? Why Dion didn't do that? Oh my God, Dion lost. What? Would, and let me let me tell you something. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the whole reason Dion left Jackson, uh, Jackson State, and whatever. Here's what I can tell you. Regardless of how people feel about it, if you go back and you look at the numbers, you look at what's going on. Dion left the school financially and set up with contracts on television revenue way better than it ever was before he got there. Uh, I'm not going to advocate one way or another for whether or not he should have, he shouldn't have left, but what I will tell you is this. The vast majority of people who are suggesting that Dion should have turned down a $5 million contract, just if it was totally career-based, suggesting that Dion should have turned down a $5 million deal for a $300,000 a year contract that actually he was pouring and investing back into the school uh, and an opportunity to do what he actually started coaching to do in the first place and that's coach a power five school to prove to himself that he can do it and he had said this from the beginning that hey my goal is to coach a power five school the only reason he went to Jackson State is a power five school wouldn't give him a chance and he told Jackson State when he interviewed that this is a resume builder that when I get the when I get the opportunity when I get the opportunity to uh, make a move and do something different, I'm going to take the opportunity. I don't think he thought it would come that quickly, but his success in coaching was absolutely uh, exceptional in, in the success he got as far as wins and everything else. So again, it showed up and he left. Uh, whether he should have left or not, based on what he said, I, I can tell you he took a number of kids, 10 to 12 of those kids he took with him. Uh, the others he opened up and vouched for in the portal. So they left and went and got better positions, at a lot of them at uh, D1 schools. So they ended up better, even though he left. Now, that's actually understanding how things work and actually looking to it beyond on the surface what's being reported. Again, uh, I'm not sitting up here saying that what he did was right or what wrong. What I'm sitting up saying is the vast majority of people who are saying he shouldn't have took the job will leave their job in a heartbeat for a job that pays them 10000 more a year and, the, and will say in a heartbeat, screw the hell out of the people they left there. And for those who won't, good for you. Uh, I applaud your character and everything like that. In a place where you're supposed to be solidifying and anchoring your family's heritage first, and you see a situation where you can literally, I mean, multiply that uh, exponentially, and we and you have decided you're going to play the game of capitalism, then 
you look at it from that direction. Now, for those who don't like the system and the way capitalism has played and how we have been destroyed in many ways because of it, and I understand that as well, I get it. But then you can't participate at all. This can't even be a conversation you in because you ain't even happy that Dion's at Jackson State because that's still capitalism. It's just capitalism in an area where he didn't have as much le leverage as he has now, as much of a, a platform as he has now. He's leveraging a bland, brand that he created. Here's the problem that I have. The problem I have is if we were actually doing what we were supposed to be doing as a community, if we were literally raising up our children, if we were really, if we were literally uh, properly socializing our children, if we were literally pouring into and protecting our children, we would need some savior, famous celebrity to come along and do what we're supposed to be doing as a collective and a whole anyway. So the idea that everybody's talking about what he's supposed to be doing, I'm going to get to the part about the game in a minute, the game that they lost. But I'm, I'm talking specifically about how everybody's holding Dion to the standard that the average person isn't going to live up to solely because he's a celebrity. Dion isn't God. Dion isn't uh, the Messiah. Dion isn't a savior. Dion is a man that's following his dreams and living his dreams and there are going to be some people who are going to benefit from it some of those people are going to look like us and some of those people aren't people are capitalizing on what dion is creating dion's capitalizing but some other people are capitalizing too this is the reality of what capitalism you either love it or you don't you either decide you're going to play the game or not but if you're going to play the game wealth is the name of the game and sitting around being upset because somebody doing something and uh, you, and you want them to do something else. My, my thing is, Dion's, it's not Dion's responsibility to save HBCUs. That's black people's responsibility to save HBCUs. You got to think that when Dion got to Jackson State, their uh, alum, alumnus, 13% uh, of their alumnus, was donating on any regular basis, 13%. That ain't Dion's fault. But everybody screaming, HBCU. Everybody screaming, they repping. But it shows in the numbers. You you not you not you're not supporting Jackson State because you out blowing up Louis Vuitton. You out doing this. You out prep repping repping your Greek uh you know affiliation and all that. I'm not going into that, but what I'm saying is all these things that are showing up were there before Dion got there. And we're going to lay the heavy on this cat because he's the next celebrity in line that we are hoping take us to the promised land. And it's absolutely ludicrous to even think that it's possible. What he can do is provide an idea. What, he's, what he can be is a rally cry of what's possible. But what actually has to happen is the people who need to move and take action have to move and take action. Dion is not going to take the whole entire black community to the promised land. It's not going to happen. But what he can do is sit up and say, wait a minute, look at this cat. Look what he did. He sit up and took his skill set. Everybody has one. Not everybody can run a 4240 and cover like Dion. But what everybody can do is look at what they're great at, a good at, and become great at it, and become an expert at it, and become so damn good at it that people recognize you for being one of the best in the world, if not the best. You can push for that. And even if you don't become the best, if you push in to be the best, you're going to get pretty damn good. And that's a, anything you want to do. You, you're sitting up looking at a man that did this his entire career. And then you're expecting him to do for your kids or do for people that you see or make decisions that you're not making. You'll jump ship in a heartbeat. They said, we're going to give you $20,000 more than what they paying you. Loyalty's out the freaking window. And it shows every day. That's why headhunters and recruiters are the up and coming industry. Because everything is about finding the next big thing. And that's what it is. Every other coach is doing it. But we want Dion to be the sacrificial lamb for HBCUs. The problem is HBCUs now has one of the... I think like a 70 or 80% turnover ratio for the presidents at these things that are just churning them out. Why? 
because of failed operations. And that's what we need to be dealing with and looking at the implications. And I'm not saying that, that some of this stuff isn't set up or engineered. What I'm saying is we need to be dealing with it. You don't look at some retired athlete to come along and save the damn collective. That's just absolutely ludicrous. Now, on to this thing that everybody's losing their mind because Dion lost. Dion is playing with house money right now. This team was one and 11 last year. They went 3-0. and They ran up against a team that was just just better than them in every statistical category, a team that has been perennially ranked for the last 10 years. And they ran against the team, and they're going to run again, run into another one next week. Hopefully they'll do a little better, but the team they're running into next week better than the team they played this week. And what are we expecting? And everybody's talking about this. I like what he said. Look. They, they were better. It was an old-fashioned butt kicking. They gave it to us, but uh, he, he said what he said, and this is what you have to say. This is the confident speaking. Get get us while we down. Get get us while we down because it ain't going to always be this way, and that's how you attack life. Get us while we down. To me, Dion winning or losing doesn't d deter me from looking at it the way I look at it. He's not my hero. He's not my savior. But I like the way he catches a square and doesn't get moved off of it. We need to be more unapologetic, especially our black men, in representing what we are, who we are, not trying to be what someone else wants us to be so that we can be accepted, so that we can be approved of, so that we can be validated. I'm like, hey, this is who I am. For years, I've been told, look, you, you need... You need to wear a suit and tie. You need to stop wearing those hoodies. You need to stop wearing t-shirts and caps. I got the damn goal. There isn't anybody on this planet that actually does what I do. Most people don't realize it because it's so damn easy to discredit someone. You can talk to Tony Robbins. You can talk to Les Brown. You can talk to E.T. You can talk to all these guys. Man, right? All of them. Nobody has the setup of how I do the Visionetics concept. I'm literally saving people's lives. And I'm not saying those guys, guys aren't because a couple of those guys are people I went to when I was ready to go to the next level and when I needed to really truly get myself going. I went to them and I paid them and they worked with me. But in working with me, they told me, man, what you're doing right now, the thing is now getting exposure. I spend so much time loving on my people that I sometimes lose sight of what I need to be doing for my my own personal brand but that's changing i'm not going to abandon my people but i am going to start focusing on doing what i do because i'm damn good at it but here's the thing my my mentor told me that because i i wore earrings because i had tattoos all over it, tattoos and because i i wanted to move to the beat of my own drum that that was only one thing that was going to save me he said here's here's an old adage that you're going to have to live by he who has the gold makes the rules I got the goal. I can change your life. I can literally help you change your life. I can do that in a number of different ways. Uh, and I can help you restructure your business. I can help you turn your business. I can, there are a bunch of different things that I have mastered that I am extremely good at that I can do. If you want me to do it, I'm coming in doing it. You don't get to tell me how to dress. Or you can go get a person that's in a suit that knows half the shit I know. And you can let them do it. They'll look good fucking your shit up. But if you want somebody to actually do it, I got that. And I've been good like that. And I'm good with sitting up and having people overlook me because I don't fit. I, I'm not fitting in your, the Eurocentric idea of what's professional. The Eurocentric idea, look, I'm not saying the way I am is professional. I'm not saying the way, I, I'm saying the way I am is me. And I'm going to walk that. I'm going to live that. And I'm going to be happy with those who don't receive that. What I won't be is uncomfortable trying to fit in and be accepted. Too, life is too damn uh, important to me. And it's too long to be sitting up living just in somebody else's damn box. So that's the thing. I'm a, Him winning is just the icing on the cake because they can't stand it. The fact that he's come in there and took a program that was at the bottom of the damn heap and gave him three wins on right out the box. And they're gonna celebrate. They're acting like he lost to an uh, inferior team. He was supposed to lose. He was supposed to lose the first game. He was supposed to lose the second game. Then they start saying, maybe he can beat Colorado State. And that was actually the most one of the most competitive. 
this is an ongoing thing. My thing is I, I wish the brother success, but I'm not hanging my hat on what Dion does. I'm worried about what Rick does. I'm worried about how many other people I can get involved in doing things that will change the lives of not only themselves, but the people around them. That's what I'm worried about. Dion doing his thing. What are you doing? Besides critiquing Dion. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. I done made it to this to this shop. I'm finna sit in here and, and try to relax, talk a bunch of noise. I I, I, I'm, I I don't and I'm 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 a ag, I'm an agitator because I don't really pull for any team. I have a team, but I don't get emotionally engaged in it. But I like to get people riled up who are like my my team, my team. I don't got no damn team. I don't get paid when they win. I don't lose when they lose. Uh, it's good to watch them. You, you you got a team you like because of whatever reason, and you roll with them. But I'm gonna go in here and just have fun watching and talking noise, doing what men do. Uh, I'm pretty sure some women in there. I mean, and that's the other thing, y'all women. Find y'all something, man. We had this thing for a long time, just us chilling. Now women will roll up. They all up in the cigar lounge, just puffing and talking and hee heeing and wine sipping and stuff. Come on, y'all. Anyway, on that note, look, as I say, look, if you like what you hear, click the like button, hit the subscribe button, share button. If you believe in the work we're doing in the community, research, the program, the think tank, uh, Black Man Lead, Rite of Passage, Restoring Ghettos, Forgotten Door, all that good stuff like that, go in that description box right at the top. There's some ways that you can show your love and show your support and help us continue to do what we do. And that's the way we actually do something instead of expecting a celebrity to come along and do it. How about that? All right, I'm out of here, you guys take care.